Hello and welcome to the Aerial Perspective and Fog Rendering Quick Start video for V-Ray 4 Revit. In this video, we'll go over how to render a fog atmospheric effect in your projects. Launch Revit and load the project file apfog.rvt from the downloaded assets from this tutorial's webpage linked below. You'll be able to use this project with Revit versions 2015 and up. With the project loaded, go into the V-Ray tab and change your current view to Render. Leave Quality to Draft and set Resolution to Crop Region with Printer set to a DPI of 96. Click Render to see the project as it's set up right now. The render takes only a minute or so and as it resolves, you can see a simple exterior city scene in which we'd like to add an atmosphere. Stop the render when you're satisfied, and then click the Settings icon. Switch to the Fog tab for the Fog settings. Now, there are two types of atmospheric fog, Aerial Perspective and Environment Fog. Aerial Perspective is an effect that makes objects seem farther away due to the Earth's atmosphere by making them somewhat hazy looking. Enable Aerial Perspective and leave Atmospheric Height value as it is now. While the view distance with a value of 8,000 meters, or about 26,000 feet, gives us a more physically accurate look to our own atmosphere, our scene is at a smaller scale, so set the view distance closer to about 1,000 meters, or 3,280 feet. This allows us to see the effect sooner than we would otherwise in the project. Render to see the effect especially along the length of the road and the buildings in the distance. The sky in the render is not affected by the aerial perspective since the sky's color already takes distance into account in generating that color. Basically, it already has atmosphere applied. However, if you click on Affect Environment in the fog settings and then render again, the fog affects the sky as well as the city itself, and is actually a little bit faster to calculate, and looks much more dramatic than before because a lot of the shadows have become muted now. Now let's move on to the environment fog. This method is a more realistic simulation of how fog works. Disable aerial perspective and enable environment fog in the fog settings. Click Render and let's see what the defaults look like. As I elapse time, you can see volume in the fog, like light rays and shadows cutting into the fog, since this is a more accurate simulation than aerial perspective. It is not affecting the sky much, however. One way to see more of the effect in the sky is to switch to a solid color dome light. So go ahead and change the V-Ray Sun over to a dome light and leave it at its defaults with a white solid color. Now, I'll also reduce the amount of fog I have by adjusting particle distance in the fog settings. The higher this value, such as 6,000 feet, makes the fog less dense. Render the project now with the white solid color dome light and the less dense fog, and you'll see a dark result. Now, since we're using a fog like this, we are muting the amount of light that is in the scene, so we should be adjusting the camera's exposure to compensate. However, you can also enable post-processing effects in the VFB to make color adjustments to the image directly. Click the Show Corrections Control icon in the VFB and enable Exposure to adjust exposure on the already rendered image. However, it is generally best to use the camera's exposure for a better result. But the VFB's control give you a nice color correction option for any rendered image in the VFB, which is really great for fine tuning. Let's turn off exposure in the VFB, and let's go back to the sun instead of the dome light. In the fog settings, click to enable the effect background for the environment fog. Set the particle distance to 800 feet and render to see the new results. And here we have a pretty foggy scene. The fog's brownish tinge is actually coming from the color of the sunlight. We can easily adjust for that with the white balance color control in the VFB. 
And you can see I'm adjusting the temperature. Adjust the color as you like with exposure and white balance to get something you prefer in your image. Now environment fog is definitely a more realistic effect than aerial perspective, and as such, it is a bit more system intensive. So let's do a final render. I'll set the quality to very high, and I'll set the printer DPI to 150 to increase the resolution. You can of course set the resolution and quality to your own comfort level, but I'll keep it at a high level as I can enable Swarm to distribute the render to other machines on the network that I have available. I'll also switch my engine options. I'll change from progressive for the image sampler to buckets, which works well for swarm rendering, and I'll do that for the very high output. For more on swarm, check out our previous quick start video on how to use this distributed rendering system. With my settings changed, I'll click render with V-Ray and let it go. I'll elapse some time here to get to the result sooner for you, and here we can see a more accurate fog effect with the atmosphere fog in the project. You can of course easily use the VFB controls to fine tune the result to your satisfaction. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on rendering fog effects in V-Ray for Revit.